Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing something a little different, something I call a drip painting. I mean, I didn't make it up. Um, I don't actually know who really invented it, but if you ever look up Ian Davenport, he's a, a big person that does these types of paintings and he uses uh, house paint. Uh, there's another artist named uh, Carla Say Fernandez or something like that, I believe. She does these types of paintings too. Essentially what they are is just dripping paint down the canvas. I have done one of these or well, a couple of them before. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make one, uh, just pouring the can, pouring right out of the can onto the canvas and making this kind of painting. Uh, you can't see the colors because they're off, you know, because of the camera angle, you can't sell the colors, but we're just gonna be pouring those colors on here and seeing if we can make you know, some kind of decent, interesting painting. I don't, they're just, they're very vibrant paintings, um, but they're also kind of like erratic. So we'll just pour the paint on and we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna start kind of towards the end and then we'll kind of fill it in as we go. So essentially we're doing, we're just dripping the paint down the canvas. And I didn't dilute the paint at all. It's as thick as it normally is. Um, I'm gonna move on to like another kind of turquoise color. I'll just pour it down the side right there. And then we'll probably go back through the colors, but I'm just gonna kind of make some streams here and then we'll kind of fill in the gaps as we go. So we'll move on to a purple here. I'll do a thick bead right there. And then we'll do a thick bead, maybe like right there. And I didn't even see if the canvas was uh, crooked or not. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's kind of going at an angle, but oh well. Actually, let's see if we can kind of prop it up. Well. I'll prop it up a little bit. I'm gonna make it straighter. Maybe we can get the paint to run down a little straighter. Okay, so let's move on to, I've got this uh, this pink here, this vibrant pink. And we'll pour that down. And I'm not too worried about it being on the sides. Um, I usually paint the edges anyway, so. Just kind of put a thick bead right there. And you know what, I like this pink, so we're gonna go ahead and run one more layer of that. And you can't really see it, but I do have some foam board underneath this. So All right, that's good. Okay, so now we'll kind of move into a lighter blue and we're going to put that right there and then we'll do another strain right here kind of right next to the turquoise that we did earlier and i'm really trying to get them to kind of go side by side to fill in the gaps um, but it looks like it doesn't want us wants to separate. That's okay. All right, now we'll move into a lighter purple. We'll put this bad boy right next to the pink. See if we can run it down next to it. And maybe run it down next to the pink on this side too. Or we'll just cover up the pink completely. Now, a lot of times when they do these paintings, they'll either use little syringes or they'll use um, almost like little sauce bottles, like ketchup bottles, how they have the little point at the end. Uh, they'll use something like that. But that's a lot of work to, to really fill in every one of those utensils. If I did this as my style of painting a lot, um, I probably would do that. But because I don't normally do this, I, I'm not going to do that. All right, so we're gonna move into red. And I kind of wish I had a yellow. I'm going to see if I have a yellow to do 
and it doesn't want to move over to the blue. I'm going to see if I can. There we go. Now we got it to fill it in. And let's do this side of the. Actually, let's just do the other end. I don't think you guys realize how much paint is being used here. It's a lot. It's just pooling at the bottom of the canvas. So you can see that, okay. All right, so now let's move into, I've got a really dark, almost like a blue green. We'll put on this side of the pink here. We'll make a nice thick bead of it. And we'll do it on this side of the purple. And we'll run that down. And we'll do it right there too. All right, cool. So we got that. Uh, what else have we not done? I think we've actually done pretty much all these colors. Let me see what else I have. <clears throat> oh, I do have a yellow. It's kind of a lighter yellow, but I do have one. So let's go ahead and shake that bad boy up and we'll throw that one on there too. All right, so we'll add our yellow here. And let's do another one right here. It's going to kind of overtake the blue uh, a little bit. And we'll just do a thin strip right here in between these two colors. Hopefully those other colors will help kind of push that down to the end. All right, so we've got that. Um, I do have a green here, so we can kind of move into the green. fan of the green. I, I don't know. I'm just not a green person. I know a lot of people like green and I just, just not a fan. All right. Where did I put my little tool to open this? All right. So we'll try this. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw in some more pink. This was a lighter pink than the one we were using earlier. And then I also have uh, a light blue over here. Maybe we'll throw that in too. All right, so let's go ahead and put that bad boy right on the end. It looks like it's going to cover up that blue. And we'll do the, uh, the pink right here. And since it's already running down the can, just kind of run it down. This is definitely a messy painting. And actually what Ian Davenport does is he does these paintings and his canvas will all go all the way to the ground. And then the paint that pools at that will just kind of be part of the painting. So it's kind of interesting. I wonder if it actually stemmed from just kind of being too lazy to clean it up, but who knows. All right, so we're gonna cover this and try to fill this um, end piece right here. Just pour it on right there. All the way down. No. And I just used a lot of paint for that. All right, and then we'll do maybe some light blue right here. We'll just fill this in. 
And is it going to fill in that little gap? I'm just going to pull it over. Perfect. Okay, so now I think at this point we can probably just kind of fill in some of these gaps with the colors that we have because we have plenty of paint uh, available. I'm going to do another strip of red. I think maybe I'll do it here. There we go, fill that in. And I think we could probably do a little bit more uh, dark blue. No, got quite a bit of that. Let's go ahead and do more of this pink right here. We'll do another strip of pink, maybe right there. I'm trying to angle it in a way where it fills in that gap. Uh-oh, just dripped all over the rest of them. Okay, so we got that, got that. I think we can, maybe we can try to fill in this gap of the light blue with some more light blue. See if I can push the paint straight down. And I think we got it. And there was some light blue here, so let's go ahead and see if we can fill that gap as well. Got that. Maybe we can do a little bit more turquoise over here. Really thick bead all the way down. Just kind of fill that in. And we had this, I think this turquoise is the one that was here. So let's see if we can Fill in that little gap over there. So that's gonna kind of cover up the uh, the yellow. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of cut back into it with the yellow. It's right in between those two. And then I'll just kind of cut in there. All right, so I've got a few open spots here. What other colors could we use? I think we could do purple on the end because there's not a lot of that there. So we can just pour that on there. So that's done. So we've got this gap here, this little one here. Let's see if we can, actually, let's see if we can, uh, I think I used this one here. If we can fill in that gap. Got it. Cool. All right, and now let's move on to this one here. can kind of push this out there we go all right so we're almost done we do have this little strip down here what I'll do is I'll actually go over more with the purple than the green I'm not a, again not a big fan of green so 
Let's see if I can uh, get rid of that. Oh, uh, I don't think it's gonna go as far over as I need it to. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, covered it, perfect. Okay, so I've got this little gap here. Let's see if we can kind of get rid of that little gap over here. Come on, come on. Perfect, all right, so now we're just, we just got one color left to fill it in. Uh, just kind of looking at the balance of the piece. Pink, we're good there. We've got enough yellow. Got some blue, red's already over there. So I think for the final color, I could probably do the turquoise and not the super dark one, probably the lighter one. force it to and pulled all right now I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue paint and kind of go on the, the corner here okay and that's it for the painting now this is a flipping mess kind of a nightmare actually um, and again, I'll be cleaning this up, but a lot of these people who do these paintings, um, they either don't use as much paint or they, or that little pool down there is part of the painting. So uh, what Ian Davenport does is he'll do these large paintings like this, and then he actually just installs them and then does, does the painting right there so that the pool at the bottom is part of the painting. Uh, Carla Safre or Safe Fernandez. I don't know how to say her name, but she does these paintings similar to this too. But she, I think she just doesn't use as much paint. She's a little more accurate because she uses little bottles of paint that she pours down. That's liquid paint. But anyway, uh, overall, it is an interesting painting. So it's very colorful, very cool, very vibrant. Um, it's very pleasing to look at because when you just kind of look at these bars of color, it's, it is kind of pleasing to look at. What I find interesting is the, how it followed the, all the way down the, uh, the little, whatever this is, easel. And that's actually pretty satisfying right there. I really, I kind of really enjoy that aspect of it because it just goes right down. So that, that actually is pretty cool. And here's the pools of paint right Let's see if we can get a picture of it okay it's taking a couple pictures now what's interesting is this little marbling effect that's kind of cool that actually looks pretty cool with the little uh swirls in it and some of these other paints that are I actually haven't even been back here this is the as kind of the aftermath, uh, pretty much a mess, like I said. And then, of course, earlier uh, today, I spilled like a pocket of paint. And I was really upset about that. But anyway, that's it. Look at all these different paints that we used. I mean, this is this is something, right? <laughs> it's a lot of gloss and enamel. But to be honest with you guys, I have a lot of colors that have just been sitting here, and it frustrates me because I, you know, I buy colors thinking I'm going to use them, and then I don't. There's a little bubble. Do you see that? We're gonna pile. We're gonna pop it. Let's see if I have something uh, small to pop it with. So mess up the painting. Got a pen. All right, here we go. Oh, it was a piece of dried paint. Well, cool. Now it's gonna have this little divot, but I mean that's okay. Or is it? It's gonna bother me. There we go. Kind of. It'll level out, I believe. Cool, there we go, perfect. So that's the final piece. Um, 
that's a drip painting. Now listen, they're very cool to look at. They're easy to make, but they use a lot of paint. Now you can do this with acrylic. Um, you would have to obviously just water it down and then pour it from the top. And I wish I had more of those bottles. I used to have the little um, little bottles that you would use to, to do this uh, more accurately. They are basically just little bottles that you can get from like hair supply places where it's like a thin bottle with like the thin tip at the top. Um, or you could use like the, you know, ketchup bottles, mustard bottles, stuff like that. So you can use that if you want, you know, to not use as much paint or have thinner lines, you can use that. But overall, that's it for this uh, drip painting. I'm going to have a huge mess to clean up and a lot of paint to put away. But I just thought I'd show you guys something different um, that a lot of, like I've seen people do, and this is the type of painting they do all the time. So just a, just a little variation of something different. But that's it for the video, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. God bless.